Hi guys, I'm Evie. And this is, and I have a lot of friends in this room, so um, they're either here to support me or criticize me. But I, I, I think they're here with love. And um, I, I just, I, I have to tell you, this is a one-hour presentation, but it's a three-day class, and um, it is based on a scripted manual that. Um, many of us put together, including Sandy Ransom, who is in this room. Uh, she was a co-author to this. And um, it is uh, based on a number of modules, and I can't possibly go through all of them. However, what I want to say to you is that um, you have uh, everything, uh, not everything in the book, but everything about the program and a lot of information is, um, is in the handouts that you can get um, on the Eden website. And I will not even come close to going through all my slides because I have a tendency to do more rather than less. But I want you to have the information. But I also want you to know that you can all contact me. Best by email is the best way to contact me if you have any information about anything uh, that's in the handout. Okay? So let me give you a little bit of background. I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for a very long time, since 1971. And um, in the very early days of my nursing career, um, I felt completely helpless. I did not know how to help people who were in tremendous pain and anxiety. And the medical model gave me absolutely nothing that I felt um, really helped people in, in, in a profound way. I also found a, com a lack of compassion. Um, even though people who came into healthcare, uh, they, they came into it for uh, all the right reasons. But as we talk about in, in Eden, our hearts got broken along the way, and so uh, we developed a lot of defensive posturing and control over other people. Um, I got into complementary ther therapies based on the fact that um, nothing was working. And I had a, a man um, who was dying of brain cancer. He was 84 years old. and um, I asked the doctor for some pain medication for him, and he said, no, it will kill him. And I said, he's 84 years old, and he's dying. What, do you, what are you talking about? We're going to make him suffer? We're going to torture this man? And the doctor wouldn't do it. And so I went back, and I started rubbing his head, just rubbing his head. And um, I was probably crying. I'm sure I was. And he said to me, you're so nice. And it I have never forgotten him. I've never not, I see his face every day of my life when I think of that, you know, that moment. Uh, but that set me on the trajectory to find something else. And by luck, I got involved with a man who is my husband for 38 years, who um, had tonsillitis about five times a year. And I intuitively knew that, uh, and I'm talking the 70s here, okay? I'm a child of the 60s, what can I tell you? Um, I, I, I intuitively knew that if he would continue to take antibiotics for every uh, throat infection that he had, that he was going to blow his whole immune system. So I started on homeopathics and uh, herbs and other things. He'll tell you how I tried to kill him with herbs, but it's not <laughs> true. Um, and, and, you know, my path went along, and I, 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 then in the 90s, I developed very severe arthritis in my knees, and I couldn't walk um, very well. I was limping, and somebody did something with me, some energy medicine thing that didn't have it. At the time, he did it. I didn't know what it was called. But he moved his hands along, uh, never touched me, and the pain left my knee and went out my feet, and I was blown away. How could this happen? Um, so um, the next day, the pain was back. I started doing it to myself. Um, and then uh, I was able to keep the, bain, the pain at bay for many, many years until I injured my knees a number of years ago, and then I needed knee surgery. But that's another story that I'll tell you about, too, because I'll throw that in there. Um, I don't have any arthritis anymore. Um, so I found therapeutic touch, and that started me. Um, I, I studied with Dr. Dolores Krieger. I've trained with her. I've replaced her in a retreat. Um, and so I was very immersed now into a world of, uh, of complementary therapies. And I've used chiropractors, and acu I stopped smoking with hypnosis, and I had my baby with hypnosis, and I stopped smoking with acupuncture. So uh, this is my, the world that I live in. Um, and it's not that I'm against, I want you to understand, it's not that I'm against traditional medicine. Medicine. No, don't ever get that impression. Uh, but for chronic diseases, traditional medicine doesn't really work that well. And we know, working in an elder population, how we harm people so badly with medications and how when they go on hospice, often they get better. 
And, and so, it, I mean, if that doesn't tell us a whole lot. Uh, yes, but there, the world has to be integrative. It has to be, a, um, and it's now a world of called functional medicine, where we're doing complementary therapies um, and traditional medicine. So the, the, trying to find a doctor to do that is very, very difficult. I live in Boulder County now. Uh, this is the old hippie haven. I just moved there a year and a half ago. I found my tribe again. You think I could find a holistic doctor? There's one I heard of. It's two years to get into her. So I mean, so so it's not that easy. Um, and and so so many docs are so afraid. But there's many people out there who are who are good. Please, I beg you, just don't go to anybody. Okay? Like my husband says, there's many people out there to part you from your money. Um, there's a lot of crazy people. There's a lot of crackpots out there who don't know what they're doing. They haven't studied. They don't have enough background. Maybe they took a course and now they're training. Uh, you have to, like with anything, you have to find the right practitioner. You have to know that they have the right credentials. You have to know what they're doing. So um, about uh, seven, 16 years ago, I guess, I came to Pinion Management in Denver. We're now Vivage. There was a change in ownership. Um, and I, I was desperate to bring complementary therapies um, into our homes uh, because I knew, as I'm a dementia specialist, I was in Canada, and I, all my staff were trained in therapeutic touch. And uh, we never had issues. We, ne we were seen as miracle workers. We could get people into baths that hadn't been into a bath for one lady for a year and a half. Uh, but with therapeutic touch, and I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit, um, I, 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 it was amazing because what, what happens when you get into the healing arts is you open up your heart, you open up your compassion, um, you, you look at the world with a different set of eyes and a different viewpoint. And so it was really important for me to bring it into my community. I did bring it into, if any of the Canadians are in here, I brought it into VON Canada, Therapeutic Touch, um, in the early 90s. Uh, and it was in their policies and procedures throughout the country and because it was a national uh, not-for-profit uh, visiting nursing organization. And then when I moved here, um, uh, I, I was able to bring it into, into pinion management because our owner at the time, Jeff Jurebker, uh, was very open and very aware. And I'm still continuing. Our new owner is quite okay with this. And so we were given permission to do this project. So just, I'm going to go through these qui uh, quickly. Um, so as you can see uh, from the slides, we, we, we debated, Sandy and I and a number of other people, uh, we debated um, what, what could we do? How could we do a train the trainer program um, that didn't require all these certifications and trainings and stuff like that where we, with our level of expertise on the committee, uh, could train people? And so we decided to write a scripted manual and we kept the, uh, the modalities that we brought in quite simple. Uh, so, I mean, it's not that they're simple, but how we're teaching it is how to use it more simplistic without getting certification and still have efficacy. So we chose aromatherapy. Uh, Sandy uh, did studies for the universe. Sandy, just show your hand. Um, uh, she did uh, some studies at the University of Austin in Texas and, uh, you know, found how viable aromatherapy was and, of course, and I had studied aromatherapy, I just didn't get certified and so that was a no-brainer. Aromatherapy was easy, but people need to know what they're doing with aromatherapy. You don't just put oils on people or burn oils. You have to, you have to do it correctly and so we were building that into the training program. Relaxation. Now, is there anyone in this room who could use a little relaxation? I know I could, like, absolutely. Um, that was, that's very easy to do, to bring um, relaxation modalities to teach people how to bring it into the nursing home. Our elders love this. They sit, you can call it meditation, but if people don't like the word meditation, call it relaxation. There's many words for the same thing. But basically, we're trying to get people to relax, uh, to focus on the in present time, um, to not focus on all their anxieties, stresses, and worries. Uh, by the way, guys, I am so informal in case you haven't figured it out yet, okay? Ask questions as I go along. I'm not going to wait till the end for a, a question period because this is a three day course in one hour, okay? <laughs> um, massage, simple massage. When I was in nursing school, we learned, we learned, we had to learn how to do massage, how to do hand massage, back massage, foot massage. You know, you don't need to go to nursing school to learn simple uh, massage techniques. 
and used with aromatherapy or essential oils in the lotion, it's, it's phenomenal for relaxation, for helping people to sleep, um, for so many things. And you're also connecting with the person. It's about relationships. And when we do things with people to help them feel better, and, and, and there's, there's this wonderful exchange uh, as the relationship begins to grow. And so, so that in itself is huge. It helps to alleviate loneliness, helplessness, and boredom in so many ways. A therapeutic touch is the only thing you need training for. I just noticed that these things, I guess I couldn't fit them in, I don't know. Um, the, uh, therapeutic touch is the only thing you need training for. I, uh, I've been teaching it for a long, long, long time. So that, that, um, th there are three one-day classes on that. Uh, but at least in the program, we're introducing people, and then they can come and take the class if they want to. Um, holistic dining. And really, when we talked about holistic dining, yes, it was for the elders in the home, but it was also for the staff. Now, we want this for the staff as well, not just uh, for the elders. We, it, we, we want it to be comprehensive because our staff need to know things, how to take care of themselves, give them opportunities and ways to do something else. So ho we put holistic dining in. Um, and, 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 and again, I know we're all seeing changes in the dining uh, in our homes. I mean, you know, when I started out in my first experience in long-term care, I, it was kind of like cat food. Now we're seeing real food in the homes. And so this is to educate people more on eating uh, healthy food. Um, drumming and rhythm circles, uh, very powerful. I mean, it doesn't, take, it doesn't take a lot of money. Yeah, you can buy drums and you can buy rhythm instruments, but really you can also tap on a table to some music and you can have a lot of fun. And, and, and that was so profound because when the first time I've attended drumming circles on my own time, when I saw it done in a, a nursing home with people with profound mental illness, and I saw people with very serious um, uh, schizophrenia and other diagnoses come to life and smile and be happy. It was like, wow, how can we not do this, okay? And, and so, um, that w th it, so we were gonna bring that in. And, and yoga, chair yoga, and all of that is in, that s in this scripted manual. Uh, when we train, when I do a training, um, this is what we use and this is what we give to the trainer. And it's all from our language as we teach. So it's not that I want people to memorize it. Uh, I, I, it just gives them everything that they need to know. And then they can decide if they want to go on and develop um, further. Okay, so uh, that, that's sort of the background and what, why we chose what we do. Uh, and again, I, I, uh, we're, we're, as we know, we're trying to get people off of medications, and not just psychotropic medications. People are into many medications. I don't know if you're reading about Tylenol now, but uh, I mean, really, all the evidence of how dangerous Tylenol is uh, to the liver and to, um, and to your health in general, uh, it's, it's very scary, and people pop Tylenol like it's... Um, uh, M&Ms. I was going to say Smarties because I've been around too many Canadians this week. Um, so, so really, we're looking at the highest level of well-being, and what can we do to help people achieve their highest level of well-being? And we can't just rely on the medical model. Do you all agree? I mean, I, I'm assuming you're here because you probably agree with that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, but. So uh, again, on the handout are the list of people that were, um, were involved with this. Um, uh, and you, you don't know them, but you can meet Sandy and I, so that's really easy. But we had, um, you know, we were a committee, and everybody did their part, and we worked beautifully together. We actually had an awful lot of fun uh, putting this together. And uh, I'm just thanking Jeff and Jay for their support. So. Um, Wikipedia, I, so, by the way, I'm so confused. I forgot a clicker, so I don't want to be, I want to look at you and not at this, but I don't want to stand behind a podium because it's against what I do, but I'm sort of forced to. Um, so wellness is something that's very interesting. Wikipedia says wellness is generally used to mean a healthy balance of body, mind, emotion, and spirit. Well-being, we are body, mind, emotion, spirit. And yet, we're, it should be integrated. The, the American Holistic Nursing Association says that uh, um, body, mind, well, I'll find the slide. Body, mind, emotion, spirit is, integra is integrated uh, in an ever-changing world. So our, 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 our framework of our body, how we take care of our body. Most of you take care of your houses better than your bodies. I mean, it, I'm always amazed how many people just load themselves up with garbage. And, and, and then begin to suffer the consequences of the garbage because the food chain has been destroyed. And you have to be aware of these things, guys, because uh, you can age well or you can age poorly. That's your choice. Um, and I will share, um, I'll, I'll share my story with you in a bit, but let me 
go back to my confusion here. So again, basically wellness is a choice. Um, and it, wellness is taking charge of your life. Don't expect anybody else to take care of you. To, or, 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 I mean, I, you know, obviously if you need help, that's a different story. But you have to take charge of your life every day. What am I doing for me uh, to be the best that I can be, to be the healthiest? Now, I'll share my story now. I'm 66 years old, okay? Two years ago, uh, all my blood tests were completely out of whack. Now, you understand, I've been doing this since the 70s, right? Um, but I, you know, I like crap. I, I like the garbage. I love anything with whipped cream um, and ice cream and sugar. Um, but all of a sudden, all of my blood tests were out of whack. Plus, I needed knee surgery. My knees were so bad. Sandy can tell you. I walked up one stair at a time um, for five years and down one step at a time. I couldn't walk. It was so hard, so painful. And now I was pre-diabetic. My kidney function tests were off. Everything was out of whack. And so I decided it was time to do something. So I went cold turkey and gave up. Um, I just went organic fruit and vegetables, uh, wild salmon, chicken, and, and pretty much that's it. We didn't give up cream for my tea or coffee. Um, and in two weeks, my memory got better. Um, it was amazing. Uh, they just made fun of me, spacey Evie, you know. All of a sudden, everybody could see the difference because my daughter wanted me tested for dementia. I wasn't, uh, de didn't have dementia, but I was displaying a, a lot of the memory issues. Uh, my pain uh, was, it was just a matter of when I booked the surgery. Um, so, you know, all of that. And then two months later, I noticed that my pain was gone. I'm now walking, all of a sudden, one day I realized, oh my God, I'm walking up and down stairs like a normal person. It took me about five months to relearn how to walk up and down stairs like a normal person because for so many years I had, to, I had done one step at a time. And then I lost a lot of weight, I'm, a, an amazing amount of weight. It just came off and that was even before, the, uh, the, uh, that was after the pain went away. It, it didn't all come off in two months. And all my blood tests are normal, I'm not on any medication. So you need to know these things because when we're talking about complementary therapies, um, I, I, I want you to know for your own life what is important and what you need to know. You need to educate yourself. There's wonderful books out there like the Brain Grain, um, or the Grain Brain by uh, Dr. Um, a Perlmutter, and, or Blood Sugar Solution uh, by Dr. Mark Hyman, uh, The Grain Brain by Dr. Uh, Mark, uh, by Dr. Perlmutter. Um, these are fascinating, there's fascinating information out there. And, and so I, I, I start this talk with that. I, I don't think I was intending to. But again, this is so much for you as well as it is for the elders. Because as you begin to take care of yourself, uh, then you have the reserve and the ability and the strength to take care of others. And as a dementia specialist, what I learned from the caregivers of families when I worked in people's homes is if they didn't take care of themselves, not only did I need a nursing home for the person with uh, dementia or walking with forgetfulness, as dear, my, my angel in life, Sarah Rowan, says, um, uh, I, I now needed a nursing home for the care, caregiver, if, especially if it was a spouse. And so uh, it is so important to take care of yourself. Um, it's, it's, it's such an honor when you can wake up in the morning and feel good and know that you took charge and you did it. So is this all making sense in the, in, to you in the topic that I'm talking about? So I say wellness is a choice. And I talked about um, body, mind, emotion, spirit, and, and bringing that all together and why we have to honor every aspect of ourself. And what that means is we take care of our bodies. We take care of our emotions. We have to manage our emotions. Uh, we can't manage anybody else's man emotions, but we can learn how to manage our own. And one of my favorite authors is Carolyn Mace, who wrote the book Anatomy of the Spirit. And she really talks about how to live in present time. And living in present time means you're not dwelling on any wounds from the past or any pain from the past. It means that you're not projecting and worrying about everything that's going on in life and the future. You're living right now. Because when you're in the moment, you can, you can say to yourself, right now I'm OK. And, and that can help sustain you, and it can help you get through some very stressful times. And I was given the opportunity to live through a very, very difficult time, four months of, of, of probably the most challenging time in my life. And what I learned 
because I had done therapeutic touch, I was a potter for many years, I, I understood how to live in present time because had I not, through that stressful time, I would have been sick within two years. And there's some talk about cancers coming up two years after a very, very stressful time in your life. And so we need to, you need to know about this. This isn't, your doctor ain't gonna tell you this, guys, okay? Any questions so far? So, we st so, so getting back to the program, we started with aromatherapy. Uh, because aromatherapy is something that's out there. Wherever you go now, you're seeing essential oils. But uh, if you don't know what you're using, you're not getting any therapeutic value. Therapeutic, uh, um, aromatherapy has been used for years in Europe, and it's part of the German healthcare system in, in Germany. Um, and it, it's, it's here in the, whole, in the health food stores, but it's not part of our health system. Uh, we we uh, started training, Sandy and I started training on aromatherapy, and we gave every one of our homes an, a diffuser. Not that a diffuser, one diffuser in a nursing home is going to help, but at least it was a beginning, and they could start using it and seeing how effective it was. And all I want to say about aromatherapy at this point is the most important thing is to buy pure grade therapeutic therapeutic grade organic essential oils not if every uh, oil has the same price then they are not therapeutic grade they should vary in price um, uh, like rose petals what do you remember what rose petals is something like $200 for five mils. We don't use rose very often, this is true. And we certainly aren't gonna use it in the nursing home, it's not in our budget. But, um, but again, based on the type of flour and, 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 and the process for the, um, making the oil, um, it, it, it can be very expensive. And so, so uh, aromatherapy dates back uh, for thousands of years. In fact, when they were, they were um, you know, when they were unlocking tombs or getting into tombs in Egypt, they would find essential oils that still had the, the fragrance, but not necessarily the therapeutic value. Uh, but it, they really don't lose their, uh, their value. They've been used forever. Um, and, and so they're used in India, they're used in a lot of cultures, they're used in the medical model. And how it really, um, there was a French chemist in the 30s named Rene Maurice Gattafosse, and he burned his hand really badly. And what he did is he stuck his hand in, uh, he didn't know that he was doing this, into a vat of lavender oil. Um, he didn't know it was a vat of lavender oil, and his burn uh, uh, healed uh, beautifully. And so, um, you know, that sort of began uh, a lot of the study. But essential oils are very volatile oils. They, they, you can't use oils that have been around for years. They, they have a shelf life uh, if they're going to have a therapeutic value. Um, but they are extracted from flowers, grasses, fruits, leaves, roots, barks, and needles. And, you know, how many uh, ancient tribes or or indigenous tribes uh, use oils for, um, uh, you know, use these kinds of things. You use herbs and oils and stuff for uh, healing processes when they don't have access to modern medicine. Uh, can I say that they're more healthy? No, I can't say that uh, because maybe their food isn't good. I, I mean, we can't just make any blanket statements that this is the only way to approach um, an illness. Uh, I mean, it's, illness is a very complex complex situation. And so we need to look at everything that's available to us. So um, again, I, I, I'm going to run through these um, because if you can pull out the handout, you will have everything that you need uh, about how to use essential oils. Not the scripted guide, obviously, but it's going to give you the information to set you on a path that, will, um, uh, that you can study more, learn more, um, and develop more. Um, so you, but the, I do want to say, uh, I do want to talk about elders. When you're using it, we never put it directly on an elder's skin. Never put an oil on the elder's skin. Now you will hear people say, put it at the bottom of your feet because the feet are strong and there's a lot of, um, there, there's a lot of vessels and uh, ways to absorb those oils. And sometimes I use straight oils on me because I know that that's okay. But twice now, because I forgot that I did it the first time, I put straight oils on my husband, and both times he needed um, prednisone. Like, like he, he, he'll, he'll tell you how over the years I've been trying to kill him. Um, but, and it's true. Uh, I'm not true that I'm trying to kill him, I'm trying to help him, but, but you know, it's true that he's gonna tell you this. Uh, Cause I use him as my, uh, you know, after I try things on myself, then I have to test it on him. So you know how it is, um, yeah, you know how it is. 
Uh, inhalation is a wonderful way to do it, and that's where we use diffusers. But you don't want anything that creates heat because then the essential oil loses its property value, its therapeutic value. So those light bulb rings or anything that has heat, no way. The cool mist, the cool mist ones, and there's these um, new ones out. Uh, they're kind of electronic. They shake the water up, and there's lights in them. There's a little bit of heat, but they seem to be uh, really good. So I, I, if I if I'm coming down with something, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, my oils on uh, in my diffuser. And and, and I'm, I was coming down with something last week when I came back from Atlanta. And uh, I had a lady coughing on the plane next to me. Uh, and so I, I had my oils on all night. I mean, the thing went for six hours, the one that I got um, at a health food store. And, uh, and the next morning, I was fine. And I used eucalyptus and something called Thieves from Young Living. Uh, Young Living, uh, there, I'll talk about where to get oils uh, in a minute. You can put them on a pillow. Or what we do, uh, what we were doing was we would buy these little felt hearts or felt things um, from uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels, and you just put a drop of oil on it, and they wear it here, and they can uh, breathe in. Uh, and, and people, uh, I, I can't remember if it was you, Sandy, or who, who told us this, that uh, elders would come up and say, uh, I want my heart. You know, I, I want my heart. And they would ask for their heart because it felt so good. So inhalation is the safest method, OK? Uh, the, uh, um, and we can put them in residence rooms. We can have them um, in, the, in the nursing stations. We know that a lot of our homes, their infections went down when they're using oils all the time, and there are studies out there. Uh, and did, uh, did you study infections? Sorry, I told you weren't. She told me I'm not talking, but I. But she's here. Uh, no. Okay, you didn't study infections. Uh, uh, a topical, always mixed with a carrier oil um, or a lotion. Do not ever use a nut oil. Uh, that, that is a, if it's somebody is allergic to nuts, you don't want to use a nut oil. No, actually, it's too viscous. It's gooey and stuff like that. Jojoba oil is a great oil. Um, I actually, uh, I'm putting, I, I'm using coconut oil now these days for everything. I cook with coconut oil. I use it on my skin. My skin ain't bad, huh? What do you think? Not bad for um, a 66-year-old. Um, uh, uh, coconut oil, I love coconut oil. And so I'm, uh, it, it's hard, but you, can, uh, you don't put it in a microwave because it'll lose some of its uh, value, it, its um, benefit, um, the, the nutrients in it. Uh, microwaves kill the nutrients in stuff. Uh, so you just put it on something warm, and it'll heat. It, it, and even at room temperature, it'll become uh, liquid, and you can mix the oils with it. Or, uh, so so uh, it, it's a wonderful oil. Coconut oil, by the way, is not a nut, OK? So, uh, so it's safe to use. Uh, obviously, if anybody has any allergies to any, any of the things, you wouldn't use it. Uh, but I, I, I like jojoba. Um, ingestion, is they do that in Europe. We never um, give uh, people uh, anything to ingest. Now, I know people do uh, put oils on their tongue and, and do it that way, but uh, you, you, we cannot do it with elders. And I, 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 unless you know what you're doing, you really don't want to do that because you don't know what kind of effects you could have. Uh, I have a very strange story where I, I developed a heat rash in between my legs and I put peppermint oil on there. Don't ever put it in near any, any sensitive areas, OK? <laughs> I was hysterical, laughing all night because I was burning up and dying. Um, so again, you've got to be careful where it is. If you touch an essential oil, you're not going to, you don't want to rub your eyes, or your eyes are going to burn. You don't want to put it your, uh, near your mouth, and you don't want to uh, use toilet paper when you go to the bath. You don't even want to go to the bathroom. Do not, so like, be careful, because even if you wash your hands, it, sometimes it's still there. So, um, so just uh, these are some cautionary. And I'm being cute and humorous, but uh, um, these are real things that happen, you know? Um, and again, uh, I already talked about the time, type of oils. If they come in a clear bottle, you don't want to use them. They need to be in blue or brown bottles, because otherwise the light will um, affect their, um, their efficacy. Uh, and you keep them, you keep them in, a, in, um, in a cool, uh, not the fridge, but in a, uh, like a closet. Or a, I, I have all of mine in a wooden box um, in the cupboard. And they're away from heat and they're away from any sunlight, and they're protected. Um, they usually they last about three years. Again, the, uh, the fragrance will last for thousands of years, apparently. Uh, citrus oils are used for, are good for six months to a year. Um, and if you use citrus oils, you wouldn't want to go out into the sun because you could get a sunburn. So they, um, they do attract the sun. So again, there's a lot of precautions uh, around essential oils, and you'll see those in the handouts. Um, so. Um, 
just a hundred percent as I told you and I talked about some of that there's something called blending of oils but uh, um, you, you would well there's all kinds of um, aromatherapy books out there and in the handout are also a list of books and uh, and places that you books books you can use and places you can buy so I'm, I'm just now going to run through all of this and now I'm, before I leave uh, aromatherapy any questions okay does this end at like, oh, at, at 4.15, okay, all good. Um, so uh, again, eating, eating is really important. And not only is, we know that eating is, is vital for sustenance, for, for, for health and well-being. But we also know it's, um, it's a, eating should be a, in a social environment. When we talk about convivium, having conversation, good conversation with good people, um, mm. eating good food. But really, you need to know, as I mentioned earlier, about the whole food process. And uh, you have to know about the GMOs and, uh, and, and, and the glyco glycophates that are in our food now from Monsanto. Um, that, that's Roundup, if any of you are using Roundup. But all our food, all our food chains, the farms, the food is being sprayed. And it's in our water system. It's in everything that we do. And uh, people are getting very, very sick. Young people are getting very, very sick. We're seeing young people, uh, there's such a high incidence of type 2 diabetes now in young people because they're not eating real food. And I grew, I grew up on white bread, okay? But it was real. It was real bread at the time. Maybe it was, it should have been whole wheat, but it was real. It's not real anymore. Everything's been genetic. Most things have been genetically modified. They're now going to be genetically modifying salmon. Farm salmon. Don't eat farm salmon. You're eating toxins and poisons. And you think your body can handle all these toxins and poisons? Not a chance, guys. We're seeing too much illness in young people. We're seeing uh, chronic illnesses developing in young people. And that scares me. Uh, when, I, when I see what, what's being served, what people are eating, it scares me. Because yes, not only are we an aging population, certainly uh, my generation, but we're also raising a bunch of young people, the, the millennials and the Gen Xers, and into illness. So do, are we going to have a whole population of sick people? Yeah. like. Garbage is good, but it's going to harm you. And I was lucky. It didn't start harming me till I was much older. But now I'm seeing it in young people. Okay? So um, you, you, you want to you wanna read. You want to read books. You want to Google stuff. Uh, be careful. But find good sites. I mean, there are some people to look at. But the standard American diet, uh, which is changing, is high in salt, high in animal fats, high in unhealthy vegetable oils, high in processed carbohydrates and sugars, low in fiber, low in vitamins, low in minerals, low in healthy oils, such as omega-3 fatty acids found in salmon, sardines, and herring. Um, Americans eat 150% more salt than their bodies need. And how many salt addicts do I know? I mean, I know people who carry salt shakers in their purses. Uh, so that they can put salt on absolutely everything. Salt is not good for you guys. Um, it, it, you know, there's other ways to uh, flavor food that doesn't require salt. And I'm wondering if salt, if there's an addiction to salt at this point. I've not heard that, but I'm wondering. And there's a lot of evidence that fast food is addictive. And uh, I mean, some of my heroes, uh, 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 by the way, uh, there's a lot of evidence coming out about the gut microbiome, gut microbiome, I think it's called, that our, our gut is very involved in our uh, immune system. And we have to have a healthy gut. And there's a lot of people who have what is called leaky gut um, because they're eating um, foods that are bad. They're not getting the nutrients. They're not uh, getting the, the, the essentials that they need uh, for well-being and health. And so um, again, I, you know, and I, I don't judge people who eat want to eat crap. It's not my job to judge anybody. I can, it's hard enough living with myself. Um, but life is a choice. That's, what we, that's one thing we still have, is the ability to make choices for ourselves. And so you have to decide, how do you, you're going to age. Because if you're not aging, guess what? You're what? You're dead, OK? You're going to age. Do you want to age well, or do you want to age sick? Do you want to, and when people tell me, oh, you're eating organic, it's so expensive. Well, guess what, guys? Healthcare is very expensive, especially in this country. It is very expensive, and there's no way in all my lifetime that I could spend more money on eating healthy and organic food than I will if I ever get sick, okay? 
I, I can't get bankrupt eating healthy food. I can get bankrupt if I eat unhealthy food. So I personally have made that choice because I was, I was lucky. I wasn't really, I wasn't sick yet. It was just moving, I was moving into it. Make sense? So these are just some pictures, uh, the standard American diet. Um, and I love what o Michelle Obama is doing around her emphasis on healthy food and stuff like that. And there's ways to eat healthy food that aren't expensive. Uh, there's beans, there's grains, there's things that are out there. And by the way, there's a lot of evidence coming out now that fat is essential for your brain. Um, and Dr. Perlmutter says you need the healthy fats like avocados and coconut oils um, for a healthy brain. Um, and that the carbs and, and, and the carbs and uh, never mind the sugars because uh, carbs convert into sugar, um, they are creating high blood sugars. So that's the increase in, in, in diabetes, but it's also affecting our brain health. And so now I'm wondering how many elders are we seeing who have been diagnosed with dementia who really are in that brain fog because, I mean, Sandy and I have done this. We both know what this is about. Our brains fog cleared up. I mean, I, it was, she, well, Sandy has an amazing brain. I don't. She's so smart. But my brain was really fuzzy. I mean, you really had no memory until I stopped eating this stuff. And you can hear me. I mean, I'm speaking clearly. Normally, I forget things. I did before two years ago. So I can't emphasize enough uh, uh, sodas. Uh, by the way, diet soda, don't think you're not. You're having more poison in your diet sodas than you are. I'd rather, if you're going to drink pop, I'd rather see you drink pop with sugar than the poison because it is poison. Okay? If you ever uh, Google what is in aspartame or any of these artificial sweeteners, you're at, I mean, how many of you just want to just drink a bottle of arsenic? It's faster, guys. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's not what I want to see happen. But I, I really, I, I break my, and, and I, I have to say, when I came to this country 17 years ago um, from Canada, uh, I saw more people in the morning, in nurses, health care aides, CNAs, um, drinking their pops, their, these big things that I had never seen before. I never saw it in my country like I saw it here. And the, it's addictive, guys. It's absolutely addictive. So um, yeah, I'm on a soapbox, but what can I tell you? It's how, how it is. So steaming, baking, broiling, most moist, slow cooking, like crock pots, sautéing, these are good. Fried foods, not good. Canned foods, forget canned foods. There's very little nutrient in canned foods, plus you're getting uh, the chemicals from the cans. Frozen is good. Nowadays, flash frozen, uh, these fo foods are fine. Uh, Costco has some of the best prices on, uh, on organic everything. In fact, they're becoming the leader uh, in organic foods. They're now going to be funding farms. Um, uh, to, be, to uh, be growing organic stuff. This is exciting. By the way, they are also a company that treats their employees really well. Um, they, they have great benefits, great pay, and great opportunities. Um, so shop at Costco. I, I really recommend it. Uh, I, I get a lot of frozen foods, m make smoothies and stuff like that for my morning uh, breakfast and stuff and throw a lot of healthy stuff into it. Uh, but don't use canned foods. Uh, yeah, they're easy, um, unless your can opener breaks. Uh, you, you, you really, they, they, but they're not. There's really very little nutrient value. And if they have to throw nutrients into the food to make them uh, uh, healthy, then that's not healthy either because it's some chemical process, okay? Uh, digestive enzymes again. Um, so, so how many people? So, a, a lot of pe you know a lot of people on Prilosec, or they take Tums, or they take all these antacids, and not good. That kills the acid in your stomach, and eventually you start stop producing acid, the acid that you need. And when you stop producing the acid that you need to break down the food as you're eating it. Uh, then uh, you need the, the, all these other things because of the indigestion. Uh, there's other ways to do it. There's things like papaya uh, enzymes that you can take instead of those, those other um, uh, chemicals that destroy your gut. But the most important thing is to not use them. Uh, if you eat healthy, you don't need them. See, when I was eating unhealthy, I was, I was popping Tums like crazy all the time. Always had indigestion. As soon as I gave up all those foods, I never needed anything. I haven't had indigestion or I haven't had a headache. I, I, I think I've had maybe two headaches in, in two years since I began that. Uh, and I used to get headaches all the time, especially sinus headaches. I never went anywhere without uh, my Tylenol number one from Canada. That's Tylenol with codeine and, and, uh, and some Sudafed. And I haven't had any. So again, I, I, I'm using myself as an example to you uh, because um, it's very real. It, it, this stuff is real. 
so it, it, when you cook foods, and especially if you micro, uh, microwave, you, that you lose a lot of enzymes. So sometimes taking probiotics. In fact, taking probiotics is really good for you. Uh, they're in the health food store. They're in the refrigerated section. I only recommend the ones that are in the refrigerated section. But it's replacing that natural bacteria that you need in your gut for your immune system and for gut health. Okay? Fresh food is the best if you can garden. Um, go to farmers markets. Uh, go to go go local. Stay local. Um, uh, farmers markets have already started in Denver. I don't know why we get snow every minute um, these days, uh, but farmers markets have started. Um, I know ours in Boulder started, and and that's wonderful. I want I want to support the farmers, and a lot of them have greenhouses of their own, and they're not using the chemicals. Grow your own. Go to farmers markets. Do the best you can because that's where you're getting the freshest and and the most. Um, uh, uh, valuable value out of the um, nutrients and mindful eating is another thing don't just stuff your face chew chew your food really well the, the, the digestive process starts when you start chewing the food so chew it well so that you can uh, digest the food um, and and um, don't overeat if you can barely move after a meal that's your first indicator you've eaten too much, you know? In fact, the healthiest way to eat is eating smaller meals, uh, uh, smaller amounts many times a day. Supper time, when you, if you have a big dinner, a big, huge steak dinner, or meat dinner, and then you, and then you, and, and then when you get older, you're it, you're getting that indigestion, okay? And then you need the you need the um, the chemicals to stop it. Yes. So fermented foods are phenomenal for your immune system and your gut. And things like sauerkraut, uh, kombucha. I, I just started, I just, I'm on a kombucha kick. I just started making my own. Mm -hmm. And I'm drinking uh, eight ounces every day. Uh, I'll probably up it. And I'm loving it. But my bottles, they haven't broken, but they're, they're, they're so fizzy. They're like exploding when I'm opening it up. Uh, obviously, I'm doing something right or wrong. Huh? Put it in the fridge. Yeah, I did. And they're, they're still doing that in the fridge. After two days of putting them, took the fruit out and put them in the fridge. So anyway, it's hilarious. My husband said it, he opened one and it went all over the place. Yes, they are very good for your gut um, and your immune system. Yeah, so sauerkraut, uh, what, else, what else? Sauerkraut, kombucha, kimchi, yeah, yeah. So um, these are th so if you like those things, that's good. Uh, but the flavored kombuchas are really good. They're very expensive. They're very expensive. Like it can be two fifty to three bucks a bottle, uh, that can last a day, a day and a half. Uh, so making your own is very, very cheap. It's just fabulous. Kombucha. Why do you spell that word? K O M B U C H A, um, and it's it's Eastern. It's out of Japan, I believe. And um, you can Google kombucha, or you can email me, and I'll send you a recipe. Um, it's I, I, I'm having so much fun with my kombucha. I started a batch before I left for here, and when I get home on the weekend, I'll be ready to put my fruit in. And I'm just having so much fun. I don't. I go. Like pretty penny at the store. Well, almost nothing. No, well, that's what I just said. It's two fifty to three bucks a bottle, and uh, maybe it costs three dollars for a big. Maybe I don't even know if it's three dollars for a big gallon, but and you use sugar by the way, uh, but um, it the yeast in the slime, the scoby. What's it, what, there's a scoby. It's a slimy thing that you put in, but it actually it looks disgusting. It it, uh, if you, it looks disgusting, but once you get past the disgusting, you don't drink that stuff. It just helps to break down the sugar and 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 uh, well, you obviously guys know about it. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. you, you, so, kombucha. Is the name of the no, you have to buy the SCOBY. Like people who make kombucha, the SCOBYs just keep uh, replicating and growing onto themselves. So you just get a free layers, SCOBY, yeah. layers and layers. Yeah, it's a fungus among us, and 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 it's. I mean, it really is disgusting. But 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 I mean, again, you can get over that, and uh, you don't drink that. You, but there's a way to make it, and you just have to be careful that you're using. You you know you're you're, you're uh, cleaning your utensils really well, your bottles and everything else. I went and bought bottles, but then I realized, um, I, you know, I just saved my old kombucha bottles, and I'll just throw it into there, just clean them out really well. Again, very very cheap to make, very cheap, and extremely extremely healthy. So. Um, so mindful eating, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh says, mindful eating is very pleasant. We sit beautifully. We are aware of the people sitting around us. We are aware of the food on our plates. So instead of just eating like, you know, shoveling food in, our, let's, let's make food an enjoyable, loving experience. And no, think of food as medicine. 
Think of food as, as, as keep maintaining your health. Very, very important. So I'm going to move quickly because uh, I think I'm probably running out of time, and that's not surprising. Um, uh, there's a section on uh, dining for people with dementia, and that's really important. Uh, get the handout and read it, but I, I, wanna, I don't want to not touch on the other modalities. <laughs> okay, guys, this is not the way to eat, okay? In fact, it's not the way to go out for dinner. I'm always stunned when I see couples out for dinner and they're on their phones. You know, in conversation, guys, you know, we can still talk. Our, our, my daughter's generation, they're going to learn. They're not going to know how to talk anymore. They're just going to text. And like I always say, they won't have to have sex because they could sext. <laughs> so let's just keep that art of conversation going. It is, such, it is the human experience, the storytelling, the sharing, that interaction, the relationship building. And mealtime should be that, okay? It should be a wonderful um, experience. Okay, to talk about, so anything else on food? I'm rushing now, but that's not a surprise. Drum and rhythm circles, powerful. I mentioned before how powerful it is. Rhythms of wellness, this is what feeling better sounds like. Uh, this was written by Marcia Brennerwitz, who wrote this section. Uh, she uh, has she has runs a home with people with chronic mental illness and MS, and um, young people. And she introduced the drum and rhythm circles years ago. And she took a course in Texas. And um, uh, she can't, and you don't need to take a course, but she did. Uh, we we had some uh, uh, funding grant money, and she took the course and bought two sets of drums. And uh, it's just a pleasure going into her home and watching the drumming, uh, drum and rhythm circles. In fact, the, 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 so some of you are smiling. You've had that experience. Um, it's, it's group participation. It's connectedness. When you think of the domains of well-being, I mean, it really brings all the domains. Uh, you see joy on their face. You see the connectedness. You see the meaning in the interaction. Uh, you, 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 I mean, it's just, it's so wonderful, such a wonderful experience and so easy for do, to, uh, to do. And Marcia brings in her staff and the residents and they do, do drumming uh, circles together. Uh, and I've seen it in many, many uh, different arenas. And I can tell you, uh, there is nothing easier to do than a drumming and rhythm circle. You can put some uh, music on and you can drum to, uh, drum to uh, the, the music. You can have cymbals, you can have the maracas. It doesn't have to just be drums. You can have a table. You, for people who can't hold something, they could do this or they could clap. Uh, but, but, but everybody gets involved. And it's that connection that is so powerful. And we, why aren't we doing this all the time? If it makes them happy, why, why do we do it once and never again? Or why isn't it part of our ritual in our homes? What brings people joy and makes them happy? Um, Al and Emmy were talking about, Emmy was talking about people need to be happy. Uh, the, the book I will eventually write is called Keep Them Happy. It's what it's about. Uh, let's, let's have people in joy, not in suffering. Uh, let's, br let's create this meaning and joy for them. That's what we're about, in the, and, and we're the world that can do it. We can do it. We're Eden people. We're, we're amazing. We are amazing. T oh, scream out. We are amazing. We are amazing. Three times. We are amazing. Okay, we are. And we can create these incredible worlds, okay? Um, and this has been going on since the early times of men. And Mickey Hart from the Grateful Dead, he went, I think he was from the Grateful Dead, he went to Congress to talk about the power of, of rhythm circles and why we need to be bringing them into institutions. Uh, you know, uh, and we're not institutions anymore, but we need to be bringing them wherever, wherever people are at. Um, so I talked about the benefits, and, um, and everybody can do anything. Um, and drumming is accessible, it's friendly, it's inexpensive, uh, it's immediate, it's inclusive. By the way, garage sales are going to start coming around. You can get all kinds of things like that for real cheap. Yes? We wrapped the uh, two by four squares with a tape, a duct tape. That's used for everything. And the residents loved it. They helped build them. Yes. They helped uh, put it together. They helped with the whole process. And then we had this big drum display. A lot of our men had drums from Perfect. other places. love it. And they brought them. And we had more fun. 
now the residents want to know when are we having drums again? And it should be all that it should be ongoing. And and actually, uh, you uh, uh, one of our homes brought in a drum maker, and uh, he had all the staff and and the elders who wanted to making drums, making their own drums, and they were doing it on a regular basis. This was uh, he th that, and then he'd come in, and if it was a birthday, they'd drum to Happy Birthday, or they'd sing old songs and drum to it, or play music. I mean, again, uh, there's no limitations to what you can do, and it allows for amazing self-expression and creativity, releases stress, brings people together in joy, and it's great for range of motion by the way. So I'm going to jump more and you can um, you can look through the you can get the handouts uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of information on the handouts but I want to touch on the other areas. Really an hour is hard but highlight the fact that a rhythm circle is a conversation using the language of sound okay and, and that and again so so fun. Um, you can see how many slides I have like uh, ridiculous right? Uh, but I wanted you to go home with information. Relaxation, so easy. Um, you know, how many of you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you had the list start of things you have to do or things you're worried about? Uh, you have to learn to relaxation. You have to relax. Uh, years ago, they used to say 70% uh, of illness was stress-induced. Now they're saying 90%. Uh, we live in a very stressful, rushing, crazy world. And you've got to find ways, whether it's Tai Chi, Qi Gong, um, yoga, swimming, uh, sports, running. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, crocheting. It can be anything that will help you relax. But sometimes you need to actually just sit in, in a circle. And in here, we've given a lot of relaxation exercises where you can bring the elders in your home in a circle and, and take them through a guided, you, again, some people freak out at the word meditation. I think it's becoming more mainstream, but I've, I know some older folks are a little worried about that. It's that woo-woo, those woo-woo people. Um, when, when in fact it's, it's really, uh, it's just coming into a circle to be together and relax and you can do guided meditations, you can buy uh, CDs and we've given in the handouts, there's so many of them. But the benefit, we are seeing phenomenal benefits. Uh, there's a reduction in stress, a reduction in anxiety. Uh, people tend to focus less on their, uh, their wounds or their illness or whatever, and I mean emotional wounds. And so it, it's, th these are really important. And there's controlled breathing techniques. There's progressive muscle relaxation. There's visualization. I'm semi-ADD, I think. I'm probably more than semi. But um, I, need, I, need to, I can't just breathe because uh, when I breathe, I just think of other things. So I need a, gu I need a guided visualization, and, and, and I can do that very, very well. Uh, but the effects are stunning. Blood pressure goes down. Uh, your heart rate decreases. You know, things become... Um, uh, more in harmony. So again, lots of information on the slides as you can see as I rush through them, resources and stuff like that, okay? Um, therapeutic touch, I told you how I got involved with it. Uh, it's a, an, a holistic evidence-based therapy that incorporates the intentional and compassionate use of universal energy to promote balance and well-being. Therapeutic touch was developed by Dr. Dolores Krieger and her mentor Dora Kunz in 1972 at NYU, New York University, when Martha Rogers was the uh, dean of the School of Nursing. And it's a research-based energy modality, which is why I've been able to get into policies and procedures. It's in hospitals, it's in schools, it's everywhere, and anybody can learn how to use it, and you can do it on yourself. That's the beauty of it. I love it. You've all heard of Reiki. Uh, it, Reiki is a little bit different. Uh, with therapeutic touch, it's intentional. So what drives the healing moment is intention, and compassion. So your will to help somebody feel better, your, um, and, and your, compa your compassion, your heart. It opens up your heart. It changes you profoundly because when you understand that if, if compassion and intentionality is what drives the healing moment, the opposite is also true. When we speak badly, speak bad words, when we think bad thoughts, we are creating an energetic virus. Uh, I love this. It changed my life as a nurse. For the first time, I had something that I could do to help people. All my staff on my dementia programs were trained in it. Uh, we could do, uh, we, we, we again never had problems. It's a discipline like anything else. When you learn it, you have to practice it uh, so you get good at it. But we all, Dora Coons, uh, one of the mentor um, and one of my teachers, she said, healing is a natural human potential. Okay, we can all learn how to be healers. We all are, all of you in this room are, but this is a modality that can help you. This is one that you do need training, but I wanna show you quickly, and it works with everything. So here's actual evidence of how it works. 
My partner, when I had a private practice, fell down the stairs. So she was doing clinical thermography. That's where you have a camera that can see into the body um, uh, and uh, it can measure hot and cold. So she fell down the stairs, hurt both her ankles, but this one was worse. The white is the greatest area of inflammation, then red, uh, then uh, orange, and blue and green are cool, so th there was no inflammation. So her ankle was swollen at the time. I came in to do, th she called me in to come into the office and do some therapeutic touch. And I thought, oh my God, this is an opportunity. Let's take pictures. Let's see if we can see anything. Oh my God, I was so excited. So that's the baseline picture, okay? Sometimes when you do it, when you begin, people hurt more. And you can see, as you can see in my hands, my hands were okay, but it was the energy probably moving through it. But here's what happened at 610. 6.20, okay? Uh, so from between 6.10 and 6.20, she was resting, and it was still working, so they always have a 10 or 15 minute time of rest. Her ankle was fine, the swelling was gone, she was, she was great. It's the, I, can, I can't tell you, it's the best thing I've ever learned, uh, besides Eden and other things that are the best thing too, but this was a really way to help people uh, that I couldn't help in the past. Um, so it can be used with anything. This woman, um, uh, this is very interesting. So this woman had a lot of emotional issues. Um, she came to me, she was raped and um, five times and incested by her father. And so I did some emotional release work with her. But I did some, uh, I was doing therapeutic touch and this is how she presented at the back of her neck. And it was due to a car accident that she'd had 20 years ago, but an emotional thing triggered an old injury, okay? Uh, emotions are very strong in our body. And that's how she presented so you can see the colors. And this is after the TT treatment, a lot better, a lot better. The back of the neck was a lot better, but then I did emotional release work with her and there was nothing left anymore. She was fine. Uh, no white, no, no, uh, no, uh, the pain uh, reduced substantially. Um, so again, it's, it's powerful, it's research-based. Anybody can learn um, uh, and, um, and, and you don't have to believe in it for it to work. But if you really think it's woo-woo medicine and weird, then it may not work. You shut things down, people shut the, things down. But um, it, again, it's intentionality and compassion, and uh, it, 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 it uses, it, it, it really um, addresses body, mind, emotion, spirit in a very profound way. And I can't speak enough about it, uh, but I don't have time to speak enough about it. But there's a lot of stuff in your slides. And you, ha again, you have to decide. Um, I have what, I'm the, oh, I'm, time's up. Um, can I, so just, just can I keep you for five more minutes? Is that okay? Uh, a therapeutic touch, the first response is a relaxation response in two to four minutes. I had a lady with Pick's disease uh, who was very agitated and very angry and I did therapeutic touch. All I did was run my hand down, I didn't touch her, I ran my hand down her head and back, uh, sending thoughts of love and peace and calm, and um, in two minutes she was fine. She went to her purse, got some Tic Tac candies, and started giving me candies every few minutes. And for the next two hours that I was talking to her husband, while I was assessing their needs, um, she kept giving me con uh, these Tic Tac candies. Uh, so relaxation response, uh, we know that it can reduce pain, uh, we know that it, um, it accelerates the healing process, and it's all researched, and it's in your, it's in your um, handout. Yoga, again, it's not a religion. Um, we do chair yoga for residents. They love it. It helps with the sleep, um, their arthritis, their mobility, diabetes, hypertension, uh, chronic pain. So I just urge you to look at the handouts, and I apologize for running out of time and not giving you everything on that slide, but I knew I wasn't gonna be able to. I hope you're okay with it. But in here, your handouts are also pictures of how to do chair yoga. So, questions, and I'm available to all of you at any time. Your information. Oh, oh, that mic. Okay, questions. But you all, on the handouts, when you get them, are my, is my contact information. Do not even hesitate, but don't call. I'm better at email, especially when I'm in boring meetings and I don't put that in. <laughs> will, you share your, um, will you share your kombucha recipe? Yeah, just c c contact me and I'll, 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 absolutely, I'll absolutely get it. Um, I'll absolutely do that. Now, here's the, um, here are the, uh, uh, if you're doing CEUs, here are the um, evaluations. And the code for this session is um, 1133.